Hello, and welcome to History's a Blast. Uh, please excuse my voice. My on-site selfie intro was a fail, and I'm recording voiceovers with a frog in my throat today. Anyway, this episode continues our exploration of Pennsylvania's Allegheny Portage Railroad at the Hollidaysburg Canal Basin Park, where the Eastern Division Canal ended and the Portage Railroad began. There's a bonus for more modern railroad history buffs near the end, too, so please stick around. The Hollidaysburg Canal Basin Park is a short drive south of US-22 as it enters the town from the west, not very far from the campground where we stayed during our time in the area. From the skewed arch bridge we videoed in the last episode, we continued west on old US-22 through Duncansville to Hollidaysburg, turning right onto Newry Street and then an immediate left onto Bedford Street to the parking area. A nicely contextual truss bridge over the Beaver Dam branch of the Juniata River connects the parking area to the park. Now this sign on the bridge over the stream implies that it's the Beaver Dam branch of the Juniata River and not the Frankstown branch. So I'm standing corrected there, which served the McClanahan foundry and other industries along its edge. The upper basin extended 1,100 feet to the marker in the distance. Which marker and what distance? Wow. 1,100 feet to the marker in the distance. In some direction, which we don't know. I can't tell. I can't see, I can't see. Oh well. But the basin was 1,100 feet long. Interesting. was guard lock 38. It allowed canal boats to enter the upper basin to the left where the water level was higher than the rest of the canal. The water in the lock was raised by opening small doors at the bottom of the gate until the level was equal. And the gate was opened. in the Welcome Center is still temporarily closed due to COVID-19. So they haven't got their volunteer staff put back together. There's an overview of the canal history. There's a bird's eye view of Hollidaysburg showing the key points of the canal basin. Here. Looking at the lock gates, the beam on the gates. It's just like the, the, the uh, canals we've been watching on uh, our uh, UK YouTube channels. A little note on canal archaeology. After the basin ceased to function, it was filled in to provide a site for the railroad yard and factories. Archaeology was undertaken in the summer of 1996. It revealed elements of the basin to remain intact underground. And to the front is a portion of the original stone wall of guard lock number 38. The walls and floor of the lock were surfaced with timber to protect the boats. There's the original part of the wall of the guard lock. And the rebuilt, or the, I should say, the reconstructed lock gate. Neat. And looking up toward the into the basin, and over here toward the playground again. There's a, some kind of a marking stone and some original stone sleepers. 
original four-wheeled cradle and track of the Allegheny Portage Railroad on loan from the Blair County Historical Society. Called this a cradle. And they've got a, the approximate location of the turning spindle. Line the rope used to pull canal boats out of the water and onto the Allegheny Portage Railroad. Those would be the sectional boats that we saw up at the visitor center at the National Historic Site. Here's kind of a panning overview of the park. It's kind of a really neat playground kind of a mock-up of the process of taking the sectional canal boats up the uh, inclined planes. Pretty neat the way they did that. Three sections. Each one is just a little sliding tube there and the one on the slope. Very nice. And right next door is the former Pennsylvania Penn Central and Conrail Hollidaysburg Yard now being used by a car building uh, or car rebuilding company and the Everett Railroad. And you can see their passenger cars for their steam po uh, powered excursions down there in the distance. Some track maintenance equipment here and some historical cars. An old composite gondola over there that's been converted for out for as an out uh, Door uncovered passenger car, I think. Old tank car, very old tank car over there. Pretty nice, huh? That is something that they put there for people to say to their husbands <laughs> who are supposed to know because they're because they're I'm, I'm, I'm a railroad history buff, so I'm supposed to know. Uh, that's one of those things that the railroads put out there to make husbands like me look like idiots. It looks like it might be a clearance car. I don't know. It's got can looks like it's got camera boxes or something on it. It has a red flag, which means it brings up the rear. And this is a, uh, I think this is this looks like a tie tamping car. It's got the prongs down there. This is this is a maintenance of way car for uh, working on. Uh, eyes and things like that but it's got that weird looking thing with mud flaps flapping in the breeze up there that uh, might be a scarecrow I don't know <laughs> yeah it's a mystery this is called the talk park for children's playground and they've got a little photo op canal boat mock-up over there Kids can play with the rudder. Yeah, the rudder doesn't turn, but you can make believe. You can make believe. Steering the canal boat down the stream. Going into the lock. These stones mark the location of Doggerty's Wharf. Wow, still here. Wear marks on this stone, and there's some wear marks on this one over here. It looks from years of maybe ropes rubbing, where boats are tied up, and the ropes rubbing and rubbing and rubbing, and that's the residual marks left from the rope rubs. Looks like you can see a shadow in this one down here too. This boxcar from a bygone age is a classic. Pennsylvania Railroad fans know this distinctive round roof car as a survivor of the X31 class built during the mid-1930s and in revenue service well into the 1960s. 
The Pensy had nearly 10,000 of these cars, and more were built for PRR-related lines. The Everett Railroad, which we'll take a short look at down the way in a few minutes, has done a beautiful restoration job. The entrance to the parking area for the Everett Railroad's excursion service is a short way east along Montgomery Street, and we found the gates open, so we made a short stop, and we weren't disappointed. Let's take a long look at this mid-20th century diesel electric switcher painted in the glorious Lehigh Valley livery. And hiding away in a corner is another classic Pensy boxcar, an X-29. More than 30,000 of these were built between the 1920s and 30s. This is one of a precious few left, and again, beautifully restored by the Everett. Glad we stopped by. That's it for this time. I hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll take time to view some of our other ones.